Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use the ultrasound to evaluate the inferior vena cava. The first thing is to know what the indication is and what is the actual data that you're obtaining by looking at this IVC, and that is you are just estimating the CVP. That's really all you can say, and you can extrapolate this to mean a lot of different things, but this is how I think about it. With regards to the probe of choice, you can use the curvilinear transducer or the phased array transducer on the right. My preference is the curvilinear transducer, but if you don't have a curvilinear, the phased array works well. Now, with regards to placement, the most common place to place it is in the sub xiphoid or subcostal window with the probe marker facing up. And you want to see that IVC right as it enters into the right atrium, which is right here. This is the IVC. Here is the liver. Here's a bit of bowel. And what we want to do is we want to get a few cycles of respiration and see what the change of that diameter is. Now, we definitely can just eyeball this as well, but if you want actual measurements, what you need is to measure the diameter in a longitudinal axis, as I showed you, at about two centimeters from the right atrial junction and the percent change. Now, I'll be honest with you, most of the time, I just kind of eyeball it to say if it's high or low, but you can definitely measure the actual numbers themselves if you want to, and the typical way that it is reported, especially in the cardiology literature, is looking at a diameter less or less than 2.1 centimeters or equal or greater to 2.1 centimeters. And then the percent change or collapse is the max minus the minimum over the maximum times 100. And this calculation right here, by the way, this is the most common one. But whatever study that you're reading, make sure that they're using this one if you want to extrapolate it to your patients and know that there are two actual different ways that some studies measure it for whatever reason, but this is the most common. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. Let's look at this right here. So here is an IVC in the long axis. Now you can see here that the image kind of moved from the left to the right. That's the patient breathing and lowering their diaphragm this way towards the feet. Now, once you get this view right here where you have maximum inspiration, you wanna calculate where two centimeters is from that with your calipers and measure the diameter there and then do the same thing on maximum expiration right here. And you're looking for the change in inspiration and expiration. Now remember what I mentioned is that this is a great surrogate for the CVP, but the way that you can use this is to think about volume tolerance, meaning if you give the patient fluids, will you harm them or not? I think that is kind of something that you can do with the IVC. Now to know that for the most part, most of the literature says that if you have a spontaneously breathing patient and you have greater than 40 to 50% change of the diameter, they likely can tolerate fluids. And with ventilated patients, it's a little different. It's a smaller change. Now, irrespective of exactly how you utilize the data, please don't use your M mode to measure. I still see this in the literature sometimes. And here's the problem. The problem is, is that the M mode cursor, this thing right here, this is not going to move as the patient breathes. It doesn't have like a homing beacon to always stay at around two centimeters from that junction. Now watch what happens when the patient breathes with regards to where the M mode cursor is actually looking at the IVC. So we start out good, but we're going to take a big breath. And look at that. We are in a completely different area. In fact, towards the end there, we're actually looking at the right atrium itself. So we can't use M mode because we're measuring two completely different things. Use B mode, hit freeze, and measure it with calipers. 
Now, this is one of the more common errors that I see with the IVC is I see people get confused between the aorta and the IVC. Now, typically what is said is the aorta has thicker walls, it's more pulsatile, but I'll be honest, sometimes I get confused because the IVC also seems to have hyperechoic walls sometimes, and there are central venous pulsations, actually. You actually have a positive, positive, negative uh, inflection as well, or a change in size. So the IVC will pulsate as well. What I do is I just look at where the IVC is going. So the IVC here, it's more horizontal and it is going directly into the heart. Whereas the aorta is much more vertical or oblique and it is actually going behind. Its vector is going behind the heart because that's where it's going. It's going behind the heart to go behind it and up top landing in that left ventricle. Another thing is straightening out your IVC. Sometimes we're gonna get kind of a tilted view like you see here. It's a bit on the tilted side. And the way to fix that and make it more horizontal, get a better measurement, as you can see here, is to tilt the tail of the transducer so that you're more perpendicular with the IVC itself. So basically perpendicular to the bed behind the patient. If you happen to be having trouble with identifying the IVC in the subcostal window, you can actually do a transhepatic approach. It's not quite as robust, the data behind this, compared with the subcostal, but it works. We're shooting through the liver in the mid-axillary line, around the mid-axillary line. We can see the IVC here, and actually on this specific view, we have a bonus. This is the aorta. Now, if you wanna do an actual CVP measurement, so knowing the exact number, we can actually estimate it based off of these parameters here, and this is coming from the cardiology literature. So if you need the exact number, this is how you calculate it. Remember that the IVC evaluation is gonna be a dynamic examination. You're gonna look at it on inspiration as well as expiration. Typically, we're going to use the epigastric window or the subcostal window with a probe marker in the longitudinal orientation. And then remember that the ultrasound is just a data point. Don't look at this in isolation. Use this as a data point, and that data point is what is the central venous pressure, which the IVC estimates quite well. That's it for this five minute Sono video. Please feel free to send me an email or an Instagram or a threads. Hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.